So good evening, parents, and also, of course, the Year 11 students joining us. I would like to start by thanking you all for your time, as well as your interest in sending your children to the sixth form of Discovery Bay International School. It is my privilege to introduce you all to DBIS's sixth form, which covers years 12 and 13. Louise Till and I will provide you with a little information about our sixth form this evening and the learning experience that students have here. However, for many of you, the most important part of the evening will be in us answering your questions. So please do ask as many questions as you have through the Q&A feature on Zoom. This is, of course, a key stage in a young person's educational life. And all of my colleagues and I appreciate that you have an extremely important and challenging decision on where to send your child for August. At DBIS, we both respect and value the trust that the many parents of our six formers put in us as their children go through these couple of very important years. Furthermore, we are committed to doing all that we can to support every single sixth form student here to excel in the academic studies, as well as, of course, in their own personal growth. We are incredibly, in, we are incredibly fortunate to have our own separate campus with purpose-built facilities for our sixth form students. Our oldest students have the significant majority of their lessons at this North Plaza site. The year 12 and 13 students do have some of their lessons and extracurricular activities on the main school site, which has excellent facilities, such as state-of-the-art science labs, specialist music and technology suites, as well as our amphitheater, the Globe. The main site also boasts a 25 meter swimming pool, as well as our own multi-purpose sports pitch, which supports the sports program. In addition to it, this, the DBIS specialist black box theater facility and our green room are used to provide students with a wide variety of options to support the holistic development. Our students have continued to excel in the academic studies, achieving excellent grades on the back of their hard work alongside the individually tailored support from their highly skilled teachers. Our small class sizes really help our colleagues to know their students incredibly well. We offer a diverse range of subjects at A-level and B-tech level three, which along with the excellent grades have enabled our students to take their passions and interests further at excellent universities all over the world. For example, from our current year 13 students, we have offers from universities all over the world, including but not limited to the following. So here in Hong Kong, we have offers from Hong Kong Bishops University and HKUST. In Canada, we have offers from Ontario, Quebec, Trent University and York University. In the United States of America, Elon University and Trinity College. In the United Kingdom, students have offers from the University of Bristol, Lancaster University, University of Liverpool, Loughborough University, and the University of York, amongst others. In addition to this, two of our students have recently received scholarship offers, one in Hong Kong at the world-renowned HKU, and another from Toronto in Canada. I warmly encourage you all to go to our website to see details of our academic results for ITCSE, A11 and BTEC over several years, as well as more details of the university destinations of our graduating cohorts of students. Now you will be shortly shown a video of a few of our incredible students and a little bit more about the school as a whole. After that, our head of sixth form, Louise Till, will offer you some more insights into what we offer our sixth form students. I've been at the school since year three and I have loved my time here. It's a very friendly and inclusive school and I feel as though I've made lifelong friends. We have over 40 different nationalities which gives us an insight into loads of different cultures and really enriches the school life. We get the opportunities to work together on challenging STEAM projects during STEAM week. We can use our skills and learning from lots of different subjects like science, DT and maths to help solve a problem or complete challenges. Uh, A-level media studies has been a really fun course to do as we get to express our own creativity and individuality with very few external boundaries. 
Um, the coursework is probably my favorite part because it lets us explore topics and subjects we're interested in and develop our own ideas. I really enjoy music in DBIS. The coursework is really interesting and challenging and we get the opportunity to perform live throughout the year through various music groups such as orchestra, rock bands and choirs. We are very lucky to have so many supportive teachers who look after us as individuals and as a group at DBIS to help us make the most of the opportunities that the school has to offer. The sixth form staff and university guidance team work very closely with us when we are making our choices for university and guide us through the various steps we need to take during the application process. As a result, most of us are able to get into the first choice of university wherever that is in the world. Our school also strongly believes in sports for all and our teachers encourage everyone of any ability to find a sport or physical activity that they enjoy. At DBIS, we are encouraged to make a difference through community service work. Students organize various charity drives throughout the year and we take part in other initiatives such as Kindness Walks for the Homeless with Impact HK. Louise, would you like to uh, say a few words? Yes, thank you. And thank you again for joining us um, this evening. I'm delighted to be able to talk to you a bit more about the life here in the sixth form. Um, our sixth form is a thriving and vibrant community, and we offer our students a wide range of learning and leadership opportunities. In this, which is the really important final stage of their formal education, whilst at the same time, we're preparing them for the next stage of their lives and for study. And like the rest of DBIS, our sixth form is a diverse, inclusive and friendly community where we all support each other. Many of our sixth form come to us from outside of the DB community. And as we mentioned before, up in the North Plaza, that gives us that easy access to transport both in and out of DB as well. So we're welcoming students from all over Hong Kong now. This location away from our main campus also offers our students a level of independence whilst still maintaining those close links with the rest of the school on the main campus. We have an excellent working environment up here in the North Plaza with the students having their own common room and study area, as well as well-equipped classrooms and a variety of areas where they can um, take part in group and individual study. And that sense of collaboration and community is very much evident when you walk around our campus and see our students working together with each other and with their teachers. Our curriculum is varied and it allows each individual to focus on their passions and strengths and really offers them challenge to achieve to their personal goals. All of our sixth form teachers are completely dedicated to ensuring that our sixth formers really achieve those goals to the best of their abilities as well. And they go above and beyond every day to help them to do that, to really send them off on the next stage of their lives. Our small classes as well ensure that those teachers know our students as individuals and that we are really able to support them and to enable them to do their very best. Um, and we will equip our students with those skills in learning that they need when they go off to university and into further study as well. As well as academically, then our sixth form pastoral team is incredibly important. Um, and that tutor stays with the students for the two years that they are in our sixth form. And again, like their subject teachers knows them incredibly well as an individual. And that tutor is responsible as well for writing that student's university reference. So it's really important that that relationship is formed and that they really have that knowledge of the student to be able to, to do that with them. Um, they're guided through the process by their tutor, by myself and by the university and careers uh, coordinator and um, the tutor ensures that 12s and 13s work together in those mixed tutor groups that we have as well. So we have a very close community um, with our year 12s and 13s being working together all the time and supporting each other. It's a real team effort in the sixth form. Um, we have a, a fantastic team of student leaders as well, made up of our prefects and our head prefects. Um, and these students are role models and mentors and leaders, not just in the sixth form, but across the whole DBIS community from early years all the way through to year 13. Um, these are students who embody our learner profile and our learner attributes and really work hard in our school community to, to really embody and 
develop those attributes in other students. And they're a very important part of, um, of life in the sixth form and in school. So we're very proud of the young adults that leave us at the end of year 13 um, and what they achieve and how hard they work to achieve their dreams and their ambitions as well. So we would very much like you to come and visit us in our community, in our sixth form community. Thank you, Louise. Um, and also for people who are attending, please um, feel free to ask any questions you like by putting them in the Q&A box. We're here to answer um, whatever you want to find out about DBIS's six forms. So please type in and we'll get to them as quickly as we can. Um, we tend to get asked the same questions at different webinars. And I thought I would ask you, Simon, that come, one that comes up quite frequently. Um, is the school selective or does it take students of all abilities? Well, thank you, Sheila. Well, to start with, DBIS is not a selective school. You know, furthermore, I'll go beyond that and say we are an inclusive school and we firmly believe that the strengths and uniqueness of all of our children should be championed and celebrated. Now, we also know that our approach supports every one of our students to achieve excellent academic results for them. And thank you, we're gonna put this on the board as well. This includes many of our students being awarded the highest possible grades. As you can now see on the screen, almost exactly 50% of our students' grades at A level across the last two years have been either an A or an A star, the two highest possible grades. These excellent academic results have supported our students to go to fantastic universities. Could you tell us a little bit about those universities, Simon, um, where our students go on after DBIS? Of course. Well, a little earlier, I did mention um, some of the offers that our class of 2022 have received. And in the future, of course, we'll be able to talk about where they've gone on to. But if we go back and we consider our class of 2021, and we can see there on the screen now, them and where they went off to, they went off to a range of excellent universities all over the world to study a wide range of subjects. So we had students going to Australia, to Canada, to continental Europe, as well as the United States. In addition to this, we had many students going to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as well as staying here in Hong Kong. They took on these courses, which matched their passions, their interests and their skills. And they were greatly supported in choosing these courses in universities by our head of sixth form, the school's university and guidance coordinator, as well as our wide team of experts. Thank you, Simon. I've got a question for you now, Louise. Um, what does our curriculum look like? Can you tell us a little bit about the subjects and uh, what qualifications are studied? Absolutely. So at uh, sixth form level for year 12 and 13, then the students chose from A level and BTEC level three qualifications, um, which are those which you can see on the screen. And so both of these qualifications, both the A level and the BTEC, are internationally recognised and respected qualifications for the academic rigour that they provide. Um, they're recognised in universities across the world. Um, and so from these subject blocks, our students in year 12 will choose three or four subjects. Um, and then in year 13, probably focus on three of those subjects that they will study for um, study going forward. Um, students should choose the subjects that they are passionate about, that they, that they excel in, and also possibly those that they would like to study further on in university. Um, in the school, we have a 10 day cycle timetable. And so each of those subjects is taught for nine hours out of that 10 day cycle. Um, and in addition to this, um, in the academic subjects, students also continue with their core PE lessons, which they um, are in their year groups. They have learning for life, which is another opportunity for us to introduce guest speakers. And again, work on those um, or introduce those those skills that will help them going forward and we also have a dedicated careers and university guidance session in within that cycle as well so our students are fully supported in their whole journey um, the rest of the students time is spent with um, their supervised study periods where we encourage um, our students to remain on campus and work um, either independently or collaboratively in groups um, with with their, with their peers. Um, 
All of this information is in our options book on the website, which has got those blocks, but also has really detailed information about the syllabuses that we study um, and the content within that as well. So I'd encourage you to have a look at those too. And if you need any more information, please email us um, on dbis at dbis.edu.hk if you have problems finding some of this information, because we'd be very happy to send that to you. Similarly, admissions at dbis.edu.hk. Uh, you'll find all our um, contacts on the web website. Um, Simon, I've got a question for you now while we're waiting for questions to come in from parents. Um, is there a well-stocked library and how often do our students access it? Thank you for that. Well, our school had recently renovated what we call our library learning centre. And this has been designed to be learner focused, emphasising the needs of the social, interactive and collaborative learning spaces, as well as traditional spaces for quiet study and reflection. It occupies the first floor of the Discovery Centre and is a hub for our students, staff and DBIS families as well. Now, if you go and uh, look through our, our website, you actually see small photos of it and possibly some videos as well. It's a really fantastic space for our students to use. In terms of the library collection, it's made up of more than 20,000 items, including picture books, classic and contemporary fiction, poetry, non-fiction books, periodicals, as well as a set of digital devices which support students with their research and project work. Now, of course, it's an excellent resource for all of our students but it has particular relevance to our older students as they're supported to stretch themselves beyond the scopes of their academic courses. And that work will support them in the applications to universities all over the world as well. Thank you. Um, and one for you, Louise. Um, what are the classroom facilities like for our sixth form um, students at both campuses? I know, you know we've got our facilities at both. So we have our classrooms are well equipped but with both audio and uh, visual with whiteboards um, and speakers. Each student is uh, comfortable places for them to study. Um, it's a light, bright, airy campus up here at the North Plaza. It's very modern um, and very conducive to um, encouraging that kind of academic, um, academic study up here. Um, we often get asked um, about school accreditations, Simon, and memberships of other federations and the opportunities that those provide. Could you possibly elaborate on that? Of course, yes. So as a school, DBIS is accredited to the Council of International Schools, often referred to as CIS. And it's also a member of the Federation of British International Schools in Asia, or FOBASIA, as it's commonly known. These are both a testament to the high standards of the school. These, in particular Phobosia, offer our students many fantastic opportunities to engage with students from all over Asia. This includes multiple academic and sports competitions. Now, of course, we've had to adapt these to these in the current circumstances, but we're still being able to have students involved in a wide range of sporting activities. Uh, our students recently excelled in a gymnastics competition, which obviously was virtual because of the circumstances, as well as a variety of different academic competitions, including a maths one, they recently that they also excelled in. Um, one other kind of key area from that is um, relating to our service and, and, and leadership and things like that. Our students were actually involved uh, and runners up even more than that in last year's Phobosia Race for Good competition. Now, this involves students actively supporting families and individuals in a Nepalese village. The work made a genuine difference to people's lives. They gained so much from the involvement with this. Now, this competition is coming around this year again. We have an even larger number of students signed up for the same competition. This time, they're focused on supporting people in Haiti, starting at the end of February, and it will run all the way through until the end of March. Uh, they'll be involved in various different challenges uh, throughout that, and it really helps them to understand the problems that people have in these areas and genuine solutions to them. I think that leads on to my next question, which is about diversity and internationalism at DBIS. Well, I'm, I think it's a very important question. I mean, for people who don't know the community or the area, um, we really are a very diverse community here. And you know, as a school, we're very much we talk about being inclusive and it's really central to us as a school. So as an inclusive school, we embrace diversity, difference and every learner's uniqueness. So our community reflects the diversity of the global society, and this is the key to our setup. So we have students here from over 40 different nationalities, a 
and the school massively benefits from the way that students, staff and the wider community embrace the huge benefits that our school community gains from our diversity. You now we celebrate the various religious festivals and things like that. We make sure that we know our students and they really connect to each other. It's one of the big things that our school you know, our school council works on all the way down from my head prefects, uh, all the way through the secondary school, but also down to the primary uh, school as well, really talking about the key differences and how we are here to support each other and to learn from each other. Thank you. Louise, um, another question we get asked um, are what are the opportunities for student lead leadership in the school? Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, our sixth formers take those um, key leadership roles in terms of prefects and head prefects, um, and they undergo quite a, a stringent application process that which really gives meaning to those roles. So starting at the top with our head prefects, um, and then each of our prefects then will um, be responsible for promoting one of our learner attributes within the school and being a real leader and a real champion for, for that learner attribute. Um, we also have a group of students who have recently, recently become uh, digital leaders who are responsible for promoting safety online and responsible use of um, technology and also how to use it to benefit in your learning as well. Um, we also will be introducing some subject ambassadors to again champion subjects across the school. We have um, as Simon mentioned, an active student council as well, which is made up of students from across the secondary school. And we invite our prefects in as well to come and work with those students in those student council sessions as well. Um, and our student leaders are um, working towards accreditation for the work that they've done as well. And this via the SSAT, which is a, another organization, an external organization, which will give our students accreditation for, um, for the work that they've done. So we have a broad range of opportunities for our students to, to work um, with developing their leadership skills, say from the youngest through to the oldest, working together as a team for that as well. Thanks, Louise. Um, uh, leading on from something that uh, Louise mentioned, Simon, about technology, could you elaborate a bit on the te technology provision in the school? Of course. So all secondary students bring in their own devices uh, and students and staff alike are highly IT literate and make the most of many opportunities that we're able to provide them with. So we use a lot of different software packages uh, to support and engage our students. But of course, we're very much focused on not becoming too reliant on technology. It has many advantages, but it's not everything. We want to make sure we use other things as well. Now, in addition to the one-to-one -one provision of devices, the school has fantastic facilities. I've talked about this a little bit before, but I think it's important to maybe come back and talk about the specially equipped classrooms with the latest relevant technology for music, for design technology, for computer science and media studies, just to start with. Thank you. Um, Again, please feel free to ask your questions. We're trying to cover questions that we have been asked in previous webinars um, so that um, to help parents. But if you've got something specific, just jump on the Q&A and we'll be very happy to answer that for you. Um, in the meantime, um, Louise, do you mind telling us about service opportunities at the school for students? Absolutely. So um, we have worked closely with a, a number of organisations. Um, for example, I think Katema mentioned it in the video uh, with... Um, helping with um, Impact HK. Um, our sixth form students have been very active with working with that in the recent in recent years. Obviously things have been limited quite quite lately. So we've looked for as many opportunities as we can to help more on a local level lately rather than internationally, um, which we would have done from our week without wall strips where we've had more service opportunities there, which hopefully will come back in the coming years. So our students have worked together um, with that, working on clothing drives, um, working in, with recycling. Um, recently, they worked, did some service opportunities, recycling Halloween costumes. So at the moment, it's been on a local level, but we really are looking for those service opportunities. And some students will do this out of school. I know that we've had students raise over $70,000 um, on a sponsored walk uh, in, in, um, in the past year. And so students really going out of their way 
to to look for those opportunities as well. As I say, it's been a difficult time for it, but that's something that we really is really important. And I think what's really important that we want to our students to take away is it's not just about raising money um, as service. It's about really doing something that's going to have an impact on people in in the long term and and both learning from that process as well. Um, and. I think you also, there's a programme of external speakers. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that's right. So um, in year 13, particularly at the moment, then our Learning for Life lessons, then and, um, we've had speakers coming in. So we would like to invite our parents in from the parental community um, with experience in industry or with a passion or a hobby or something they can introduce to our sixth formers to expand that range beyond their academic teachers. So recently um, we had a nutritionist come in from uh, Chartwells who are our school caterers and giving us us uh, year 13 some really valuable tips on how to cook when they go to university um, and how so things like that so we really want to broaden that range of experience beyond the classroom and to invite external speakers to come in and to to give our, our students some real life experiences as well that they can take away with them um, Simon one question we get asked um, what are our um, auditorium and school hall facilities like? Well, I did briefly mention before the school has an amphitheatre, that's our Globe Theatre. This is an excellent location. We use it regularly, obviously not quite as much at the moment, but we use it regularly for, for student performances and productions. We have assemblies in there, as well as parent events such as graduations and prize givings. Um, again, this was another venue that was recently completely refurbished. So it is a genuinely fantastic environment for all the many events that we use it for. And um, another question we get asked quite often is uh, additional needs. How does the school support students with additional needs? Well, as we talked about, and it is, it is a key thing to us as our school, and we really do focus on it. We are an inclusive school. So DBIS actually supports students of a wide range of abilities and skills. Uh, and our inclusion department is staffed by seven specialist teachers, uh, over 15 educational assistants who assist the staff, the students and parents as well, of course, in providing for students with individual needs or those who require support in their development uh, or communication skills within English. Now, again, it's a really important part of what we offer here. So you can actually go onto the school website. You can see our inclusion brochure, which gives some more guidance about that. OK, and, and English language acquisition as well well absolutely exactly the same kind of area as well i mean these things are all very important um we welcome students who speak over 30 different languages you know we celebrate the linguistic the cultural diversity that this brings to the school uh and as such of course we must be supported supportive and we are so we put our students uh who are new to english or learning english and ensure they're able to fully participate in all areas of school life and again information about that can be found in our inclusion brochure on the website um, again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them on our Q&A section. Um, another one that we get asked quite often, Louise, is what outdoor and experiential learning opportunities does the school offer? Well, obviously, we're in a really privileged position here in Discovery Bay. We've got a lot of this on our doorstep um, for outdoor learning. So we have got the beach in front of us. We've got the mountains behind us. So we're very, very lucky in that respect. Um, we as many opportunities we can offer. Obviously, our Week Without Walls program um, offers those, those opportunities for experiential learning um, in terms of our, of our academic subjects as well. I think, you know, subjects will offer those um, opportunities as well within within those is, and um, to do that too um, but very much in terms of um, this ties in with our service and leadership as well in the experiential learning um, I say we're in a, in a very privileged position where we are now to, to take our students out to experience things outside of the classroom as much as we can. Um, one other uh, important area that people tend to uh, like to ask us about is um, how does DBIS assess schoolwork during the sixth form? 
Um, so uh, A-levels are quite um, different in the fact that a, a number of our A-levels are assessed uh, in a modular way. So students obviously are assessed throughout the course with formative and summative and verbal feedback from their teachers. Um, but in terms of some of our subjects, and obviously this information is all um, in the syllabus I talked to you about earlier, but for, for our sciences, for example, a number of our subjects are examined in January and June of each year. So our students have very key markers along the way of their progress. Um, and that also gives them real clear targets to aim for as well when they're taking exams um, at two points in the year. Um, but obviously throughout the year, um, especially in sixth form students are, um, they're doing a lot of exam practice, they are uh, learning exam technique, they are uh, looking at past papers and learning those exam skills as well. But they will be continually guided by their teachers through, as I say, through formative feedback, through written feedback, through the learning conversations that they have with their teachers in, in lessons and out of lessons. Um, and very much to say guided in the next steps of how they, they will progress um, towards those final examinations in, in year 13. BTEC, of course, is a different um, is a different situation where they are all assessed by coursework. Um, again, that is a continual process of assessment. And again, the students are guided all the way through to know exactly where they are and where, what they need to do to get to the next stages. So again, when you're considering the, the courses that you would like to take, then that is another thing to think about of how a, fi what a final assessment works best for the individual, whether a student is better at um, being assessed via coursework the whole way through a course or whether they um, a combination of coursework and exams or just exams so a levels and btechs will cover all of those but again that's that's listed in the uh, the detailed information in the booklet okay um, and one final question for you louise is how are students supported in when they apply to universities what's the process Yep, so that process starts at the beginning of year 12, although they don't apply until they're year 13, in year 13 or at the start of year 13. And that process is just for the UK, just finished now, um, with that final deadline being in the middle of January. But they're, um, they're, they're supported from the very beginning. We start to look at how you choose a university, where you choose a university. Um, we offer a number of events like this, Prior to this, where um, myself and Mr. Koenig will explain the application process for um, a number of countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia and Europe. Um, we use Unifrog as a really valuable tool, um, which all of our students are subscribed to, so they are able to um, use that to help them to narrow down their their interests and match courses to that, match their skills to that as well. Um, and we guide them through that process the whole way. And then obviously we go through how to write a personal statement, um, tutors work with them on that as well as myself and Mr. Koenig, um, and all the way through to the final application and beyond, obviously. It doesn't just stop when they leave us, we still continue to, to guide them as well from on results day and, and beyond that as well. Um, but it's a real team effort as well to, to do these university applications because they're so important. Well, if there's no more questions, um, thank you again for attending today's webinar. Uh, we hope that it was informative um, and we'll post the recording from the, the webinar as soon as we can on our website. Thank you also to Louise and Simon. Um, and Good night from us. Thank you again. Thanks a lot for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.